Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Prime Take. Today we are having a conversation with one man who was so instrumental in the Black Stars' quest to qualify for his first ever FIFA World Cup in 2006. And guess what? In 2008, during the African Cup of Nations, especially in that quarter-final contest against Nigeria, when Ghana was drawing 1-1, he and Aminu Dramani came on and changed the dynamics of that encounter as Ghana won 2-1. His quest to play in the World Cup, however, did not materialize. 2006, 2010, 2014, now he's a football coach. I'm speaking to no other person than Lai Kingston. Lai, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm good. You're always, you? you're always on your laptop. What are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to put things together. I just uh, finish training. Yeah. Uh, after training, I come uh, to the office and then try to plan for the next one. Evaluate the session and then plan for the tomorrow's session. So uh, that's why you can always see me going on my laptop. <laughs> your life has always been football. Yeah, uh, because I don't see myself doing something else. Because uh, I love the game so much that I can't stay away from it. So that's why I'm still in it. How did you start out for you to like football that much? Um, it's in the blood. Because my dad uh, played football. Okay. Uh, my dad was a goalkeeper for Accra Great Olympics before moving to Accra as a folk. Oh, okay. Uh, and also played for the national team as well. So it's in the blood. Most of my siblings know how to play football, especially the men. Yeah. The boys in my family, all of them, but it's only myself and my senior brother, Richard Ole Lekinson, who played to the, high. To the top. Uh, uh, how was your, your, your start at? How was it like? Um, like, like I said, I, I was born in Jamestown. Okay. Um, and grew up there until I, meet, I moved to my dad's place in Teshi. Um, and you know, we all know uh, Jamestown, you yeah. only see football and boxing. You know, beginning I, I tried to box, but I, I, find, I find passion in football than boxing. So that's how come I focus on uh, football and then... You tried boxing? <laughs> yeah, I tried. Uh, every child in Jamestown will try boxing. You know, even if you, doesn't, you don't want to do it, they will bully you on the street. You have to fight to defend yourself. So, uh, but I chose football and uh, I have no regrets. Uh, how was the, the, the boxing thing like? Because we don't know you for boxing, we know you for football. How was it like? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was tough, you know, but everything, especially in sports, whatever you started at a tender age, yeah. you get, you grow through that and then you understand the foundation and everything and then yeah. that will guide you. For me, I believe if I choose boxing, I will, I, will, I will still make it like I made it in football. Really? Yeah, because I have, I have passion for everything I do. Everything I do, I put 110% in it. Why is so talented with punching? <laughs> uh, I can defend myself. I can defend myself. And you can punch too? Uh, I, I know one or two things because I learned the, the basics. So how was, how was it like? Who were, who were your, say, your your mates or colleagues within the time you were boxing or were you just a street fighter? Uh, street fight was there, but uh, 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 Aboko, Joseph Aboko, yeah. uh, and then uh, Joshua Clote. Oh, okay. Yes, they were, they were my age group that uh, we started uh, okay. with. And then we have likes of uh, Bessie Tyson and uh, SK Majas. That time, my Kote and uh, Afro Kote, they were yeah, they were at the top. They were, they were ahead of uh, yeah. of the people I mentioned, Joshua Clotte, Joseph Abuko, and all those people. Even even when I was with uh, uh, Starlets and the yeah. Seventeen, yeah. at Winneba, Black Bombers when they come to oh, camp okay. in um, the University of College, Winneba. Yes. Uh, after my football training, I always go to their sections as well. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a timer. I, I hold the time for, Oh, okay, for okay. To when they're sparring and all that. Yeah, when they're sparring and all that, I'm the timer, a timekeeper. <laughs> I'll, I'll be keeping the time for them because I, I, I love boxing as well. Growing up in Jamestown, how was it like for you? Like, it was a tough place. It was a tough place, but it's a place that you get everything from there. You know? Everything like? Everything like. Um, if you really wanted to, we have a lot of uh, uh, 
top people that they are well educated. Yeah. You know, sometimes they they, they only see the bad side of, of the of, other side of the other of side, the other side yeah. of, of Jamestown. But yeah. we have people in Jamestown that that they, they, they someone like uh, uh, Ajay. Ajay, the the Accra mayor. Oh, okay, uh, Ajay, Accra so mayor, so Ajay, so yeah, so yeah. yeah. He, he grew up in book in, in Jamestown. Jamestown. Grew up in Jamestown. You can see how well he's, he's educated. Yeah, he's a learned person. Yeah, and we have we have a couple of guys, Nila like Devanda boy. Yeah, you know, so we have people in Jamestown too that have uh, other side. That they've done they've done very well in their their life. Apart from this, the other picture that people see. Many of you from Jamestown often tell the story about how difficult it was for you to start out. Yeah. There are issues like you mentioned earlier about education, about your family background. It was very difficult for um, people to actually even feed. How was yours like? Uh, you, you, know, you know, it's a fishing town. Yeah. So every child will, even if you are a student, every child will try to go to the uh, beach to go and hustle small, yeah. you know, which we've done it. There is something called kete. Yes. You know, there is, uh, especially during Christmas, there is uh, there's particular fish that the fishermen bring. Oh, okay, okay. They get a lot yeah, yeah. of those fish. And this is when the young boys in the community try to go there in the middle of the night. They go early and then come middle of the night. So you go there and, and gather some fish and you sell. And you have something small. You know. we, we've done all those things. Oh, really? I was just coming to that question. Have you we've tried that? You know, we, go, we go and hustle. You know, maybe you help pull the canoe yeah. to shore. Then after that, they'll give you small fish. Then you go and sell and then, and then make money. Or bring some to the family so that your parents will cook for the whole family to, to eat. So uh, we've done all that. How, how was the street football life? Um, it was. Or is it the street life that took you to football? Yeah, the street life, you know, I'm, I'm someone that I don't stay home that much uh, because there are a lot of uh, teams around, especially Greater Accra. Yeah. Let's say Choco, you go to Mamplobi and play a team in Choco, I play a team in Mamplobi, uh, Nungwa, Labadi. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so normally I don't stay at one place when I was young. I stay here for like a few days and I'll be moved to a different location, go and play there. So I, I pick places that I feel comfortable. Oh, okay. I will go, maybe I will go to Choco and go and play there. And if I, I feel comfortable in Numa, I will definitely come back to Numa instead of going back home to yeah, Jamestown. Yeah. Once a while, then my mom will come and look for me. <laughs> and that time I will be... I can imagine, why, 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 why the last born or what? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't the last born. <laughs> but why would your mom come looking for you? <laughs> because come, last born, we, we are privileged. Our mothers will always look for us. I, I was young. I shouldn't have left home that time, but because of the situation I find myself in, uh, I have to go out and then uh, find for myself. You know, if I if I have to say that, so that that allows me to to go and then work and then get something out of it. I quite remember some of my colleagues, uh, Edmund Copsey, former yeah yeah lots of football, yeah. Uh, player, uh, him and Stephen Apia. After yeah. every training, they will go to. A wager and, and, and carry stones hmm? you know, for them to get something small. Or even Sylvia Pia once have become a, a, a mate before, yeah. tro -tro mate before. So all these things is, is just. Uh, did, did you also try the trotro mate? No, that's not my thing. <laughs> because I was scared. You know, you know, back in the days there is this arrow glass. Yeah. And, yeah. and most of the mates, they don't allow the trotro to stop. Yeah. The trotro will be moving and they will be running. They will be running. And I'm scared, I, I, I don't want to fall down. Ah, so you grew up with, with Stephen Apia and Co? Yes, I did. I did. Uh, Stephen grew up uh, around Choco. Yes. And I grew up in Jamestown, to be precise. But that, that how come you became friends? Um, be, we, because we meet each other. Oh, okay. In football, he was playing for my TV3. He was a key player there. And I was playing for Cowley Babies. I was a key player there. Oh, so, okay. So every game, my TV3 against uh, Cowley Babies is a, is a rivalry. And we meet in, 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 in Muchendi as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so we know each other. We know all the top players in that, that area. Yeah. All of us, we know each other. Tell us about the rise to the national team. How were you called up to the national team? Um, the junior national team, U17, as you team, mentioned earlier. Yeah, the junior national team, it was Colts football. I remember uh, Kaole babies, we were unbeaten that year. 
So we have to go and represent Greater Accra, yes. which we did. And in the tournament, I had a very good tournament. I have a solid tournament. That's when I was being picked to represent Ghana U15s. Oh, okay. Yes. So we have uh, likes of Corina Tram, likes of Aziz Ansan, Osebo Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we were uh, uh, Hamza Mohamed. Yeah. Ah, Hamza Mohamed. Is it uh, the Tamale? The, the Tamale City is good. Tamale City, okay. Yeah, he was yeah. my mate. Oh, okay. You know, we met in courts. Uh, I think my team and his team, Republicans, we went to the final in the tournament and Kaole Babies won the, won the trophy. Wow. So that's how come we were all scouted to form the national number 15. Oh, okay. So that's how come I got close to the national team. And, and it doesn't end there. It still justifies your inclusion. Okay. So you still have to keep your position by your, with your performance before you be able. So I managed to stay in and then did well. And then when they used, after two years, I was graduated to the U17s. U17s too, it did not end there. You have, still have to work hard. U17s, I did well and then I graduated to U20s. So through the ranks and then when I moved to Europe, that's when the national, senior national teams came, came, to, the came picture. to the picture. If you have just joined us, we are having a conversation with Lai Kenstein. He's been sharing the story of how he started out. And we are now at a point where he made it to the junior national teams. And uh, we'll move on to his professional level now. But before that, we need to wrap up on uh, playing in, for the junior national teams. Lai, uh, let us have an idea. What was the junior national team career like? Uh, it was amazing. You know, beginning was a little bit disappointing, but uh, I'm the type of person that I don't give up. Why was it disappointing? Yeah, because I, I went there as a midfielder, but uh, during the trials and everything, the coach, uh, E.K. Afrani, may he so rest in peace, put me as a right back. So throughout my under 17 career, I played as a right back, which I played most of the games in the qualifier. But when in the, and then in the youth championship too, I, I played all the games. But going to the World Cup in Egypt, the yes. 97 World Cup, yeah. uh, pre-season pre -season in Egypt, I, I got sick and I lost my spot. You know, so two game, two friendly games, built up to the tournament, I couldn't play the game. But the tournament itself, itself I was fit. But the person that played my position did well. So it's very difficult for Who him. Who was that? It was Razak, Ibrahim uh, Brahim Razak. He played oh, okay. for Mighty Jets. Oh, okay. And, yeah. He, he, he took my place and he was doing well. So I lost my, my spot. So throughout the tournament, I only played just one game, which is the third game of the group stage. Yeah. Because we won all our first two games. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and okay. Then, so he needed to give other players the opportunity players to, opportunity to which, fill the tournament. Which I came in and I, I played very well. So thinking quarterfinals, I would take Please. my shirt back. I went back to the bench. <laughs> and I quite to remember in the final against Brazil, uh, we've, we've had suspensions. Yakuba Bakari was, was suspended. Okay. He was playing in the midfield. The, so late, the late Yakuba Bakari? The late Yakuba Bakari. Oh, okay, okay. He was playing at, at number six. Okay. Uh, he was suspended. So all the players were like, oh, so this is the time for them to put lie in the midfield. And Afrani said, no, I'm not going to play there. But during the game, he realized, no, he made a mistake by putting me there. He started at Ule Kwe Jr. Ule Kwe Jr. was a super sub. He comes from the bench and he will come. Yeah, change the with game. Freshly, change the game with his shots, long drive shots. But he started him and he couldn't finish the game. He slowed down when we needed most. So that, for me, I think that's one of the key moments that uh, let us down because we did not uh, do our calculation well. Then, then I graduated to the U20s. Yes. In the U20s, I was the key player in the team. The star line. Yeah, I was the key player. <laughs> that, that, that shows the, the hard-working part. Yeah. You know, because it's not easy. You know, Ghana, we have a lot of good players. Talents. You know, and your position in the national team is not guaranteed, especially in the youth stages. Yes. You need to keep up. Because players that play in the U17s, yeah. most of them faded out. Yes, yes. Faded out. It always happens. Yes, faded out. But myself and few of us, we kept it till we got to the senior national team. Uh, and talk to us about the under, under 20, uh, was it the African Championship that yeah. Ghana, Ghana hosted? Ghana hosted yeah. And uh, you have a, a story there to share with us. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I 
about the Tico car. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was my first car. Um, I had a very good tournament. Uh, I remember I scored the only goal in the final against Nigeria. Yeah. And after that, I was uh, some one, one man gave me a car, a Tico Daewoo car, which I cherish it most. Is it still there? No, it's, it's, I, wish, <laughs> I wish I can just uh, take the tires out and then just put it on the, the museum. You know, and, and everyone knows so the we'll, car. So we'll go to the museum and say, this is like a Tico's car. And, and they, they named the car Abinwaha. Abinwaha? Yeah, so, ah, okay, so those cars. Any time, any, no, we are, now we had Abinwaha. Yes. But those days, Tico have just started coming. Uh, and in that tournament, yes. in that tournament, they were banding that song, uh, that the number song. Yes, they, were, yes. they, they banned it, but during the tournament, anytime we score, then they would play the song uh, in, the sound in, the, in the stadium. So that's how come the sound uh, came up again. So when I, I got the car and I, I wrote a binwa at the back, <laughs> <laughs> so you can pass it like a binwa, a binwa. <laughs> So how was it like when you got that car? No, I was very excited, and, and that time I don't know how to drive. I don't know how to drive. So how did you use it? Um, a friend of mine knows how to drive, so oh, okay. he used it a little bit. So it took me like two, three months before I, you I learned find how my to feet. Yeah. And Quite after an that, I took one. over I, nothing else. And talk to us um, about your local career. I remember you've played Great Olympics before, isn't it? Yeah. You've played for House of Oak That's my first uh, Premier League team. Tell us about the Great Olympics story. Yeah, uh, with Olympics, before I moved to, I signed for Olympics, it was Arts of Folk that want me. Okay. So we were in, like I said, we were in National Under 15 camp, yeah. and Arts of Folk came to Winneba to pick myself and uh, Godwin Atram. Okay. Because the coast team that we were playing trained on the same pitch with Arts of Folk. Oh, okay. The lotteries. Okay, okay, the lotteries park. The lotteries park. Yeah. That's where my coast team plays. And then ask for folk training them. Yeah. So sometimes we'll be training and then ask the first team goes they, they started coming, the fans will come. Yeah. So they see, they've been seeing us training. Oh okay. So I that's see. how come they started spotting us. So they came there to pick us, but we told them they have to leave first. So we break camp and we're coming home. So we're supposed to go to Hearts. Yes. And then I said to Godwin that. I think Arts of Folk, if we go to Arts of Folk, there is no way we will get a you chance. You can get a play. chance to play. At Olympics, we can. That time, Adukuka was chasing us as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, I remember we dropped at Kaneshi, and then I told Godwin, let's go to Olympics training grounds at uh, Labadi. Okay. So first, we went to Adukuka's office at Adabraka, and he gave us money, then we went to Olympics training. How much? On Friday. Can you recall? On, on, <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, after training there, yeah. uh, Olympics is going to play against Kotoko in, on, in top four game. And then they, 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 they called me and Corina Trump to, to join the first team to Kumasi. Oh, okay. So that was my first Premier League. Ah, so that's how you were signed for Great Olympics? Uh, right, yes, <laughs> from that time. And, and when we went there, we, we thought maybe oh, we are young, they'll put us on the bench. Yeah. Or even wear a jersey to play in the Premier League game is, is a. Is a for me, it's, 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 I'm very proud to yeah, be in that jersey. Yeah. And first eleven came out, and myself and Godin Atran were starting. What? Yes, against Kotoko. Just like that? Big game, just like that. So your first game for Great Olympics was against Kotoko? Against Kotoko, in Kumasi. I can imagine. Yeah, which myself and uh, Atran, we had a very good game. After that, then uh, Adegoka was like, wow, these boys can do it. That's how come Nyayamon came in, Danque. Uh, we were all on the same. U15. Oh, okay. So we brought all of them, Dampe, Christopher Pelete, Aziz Ansan, Jose Boati. We brought them in and Adekuka signed all of them. Because if these two can do it, then, then the others you can do it. But I also remember there was a Chinchinga story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after that one, after our first training. Yes. After our first training. Yes. And, and you know, Adekuka said, okay, give them uh, one kebab and then. And, and some more. Yes. So the Adoka gave us, and me, I'm hungry. I finished mine, there, but got that trap, he wrapped his own yeah. in the rubber, and he's asking, What are you going to do with it? He said, No, no, no I'm going to buy KK. 
I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have got so many interesting stories to yeah. share with us. And then you graduated to the national team, and that was how you qualified for the first ever World Cup Ghana participated. Just, just talk, talk us through briefly that qualification series to the 2006 World Cup. Yeah, so that time they've, they've played some couple of games, uh, especially in the first round. Yes. Um, I was invited uh, the the first game against Burkina Faso away game. Okay. But that time I've come down from holidays. I was playing in Russia. Okay. I've come down for holidays, and then the FA realized I'm in town. That's how come they came to my house and invited me that I should join the team. And that time, that's how they were inviting you people. They just come to your house and take. Then I said to them, No, 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 you cannot do that. You know, what if my team get to know that I'm on holidays and I'm now playing football? It's not nice. So do the right thing. So I was with the team, but I did not travel with the team to Burkina Faso. Oh, okay. I, no, I did not go with the team. So I told them the next game they should do the right thing. You think they should write to your club? Yes. Oh, okay. Invitation to the club. Okay. And the club okay. will know. Okay. okay. We release it. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine your club know that you, yeah, are, you, are, you are here. Yeah. And then seeing you playing play international somewhere. football. Yeah. It's not, it's not right. So. But the next game against uh, Congo, yeah. away, they did it. The invitation came in and I came. So that was my first game for the... Was it the season. away game? The away game against okay. Congo. Okay. Which I, I had a good game as well. You know, it was... I think I assist for that goal. Okay. Samoyan's goal. That gave us 1-1 one, one draw. And then against Burkina Faso, I was on the bench. I couldn't start it. Because the Doya changed his mind last yeah. minute, a day before the match. Match prep and he changed his mind, put me on the bench. We won the game, went to South Africa, which is a very big game. Yeah. So that moment, after we beat Burkina, we were close to South Africa. Yes. So it's like they were leading us by one yeah. point. So we have to win. So after we beat them, then we came at the top. At the top. And then we have to play against... Uh, I remember you played Uganda too. Uganda. Al Baba Yara. Yeah. Yes. And we then after, Uganda won 2 0 or something. Yeah, after, right? after South Africa, we played Uganda. Yes. And Uganda game, they told us, oh, if we beat Uganda, we've qualified. It was 2 0. Yeah, I remember. After we beat Uganda, we were jubilating, and all of a sudden they told us, hey, we have to beat Kate Vett. Kate Vett. Before we can qualify. So uh, it, was, it was a tough moment, but we, we came through. You went, you went through and you beat Kate Vett 4 0. Yeah, 4 0. Yeah. yeah. Kate Vett, we were, we, we were not surprised that we're going to beat them, but we knew it's going to be tough, tough for us. The reason is the pitch that we're going to meet. Because you know that time we yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, that time, yeah. Kivet, they had not invested well in, yeah, their, in their game. So we were scared that the pitch that we see will affect like us. That's why we, we managed to score early goals and then silence them. Quickly. Tell us about the discussions you had within the group as players. What were you telling yourselves? Yeah, but for us, for us, we knew Ghana have been craving for the World Cup for a long time. Yes, uh, we've had a lot of good, good group, but they couldn't qualify. Yes, we've been very close with the Pele's group. Yeah, but uh, it did not happen. So after we beat South Africa, that's when we had the belief that okay, we can do it. Because at the moment we are at the top, we have to win all the rest of the games. Yeah, we know if we win all the the games, we are, gone. We, we are gone. So it's in our hands now. So for us, it, it gave us a lot of motivation, huge boost for us to qualify the nation. Because we know Ghana is a football nation. Uh, other North African countries have been yeah. there. Countries that we, we, we won the Nations Cup three times before they even came they yeah, there yeah. several times. And even Nigeria was there. Yeah, yeah. And you know Nigeria, Ghana... <laughs> Why do you use the word even in Nigeria? <laughs> exactly. Nigeria was there. So that alone, we also have to be there. Yes. You know, so that gave us the motivation and we, we know that we have to do everything possible to qualify. It. And I was, I was very happy to, or privileged to have a wonderful team around me. Yeah. Because the love that we share, you know, I always say that we, we are not the best group Ghana have ever had, but we love each other. You know, we love each other. And you know... But how can people love each other like that? Yeah, this is it. We've been friends before we even met in the, in the national, national team. team. When you look at Michael Essien and Sule Mutare, they've yeah. been friends with when they were playing for Liberty Professional. Yes. If you look at myself, Steven Apia, from yeah. childhood... And you were the quartet. Exactly. 
So you see, <laughs> you see the, I can the condition. I, yeah. I do recall, was there some game like this? Was it against Congo or something? We're watching on white, uh, black and white television. You gave a very long pass, diagonal pass to the other end of the pitch, and Steven Pierre trapped the ball, and the oh, whole yeah. place clapped. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do recall it that. It counts automatic, you know. So like I said, if you love someone, everything yeah. you have, you share with the person easily yeah. without thinking. So that's, that's what our strength. So what kind of a leader was Stephen Apia for, the, for this group? Of, for this group? Oh, he, he's, he's someone that wanted everyone to be on the same platform. Oh, okay. You know, he, he doesn't own anything. You know, we have leaders that will be like, oh, I'm the leader. I'm the leader. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Apia, he makes sure he gives responsibility to everyone. Everyone on the pitch. To own it, even off the pitch. You won't see Stephen Apia addressing the group. You won't see him addressing the group. He, he believes Essien can do it. He believes John Mason can do it. He believes I can do it. So most of the times, even calling management meeting is not part of it. Really? No, it's not part of it. We do that. <laughs> I he will see. Be there, he, will be there and then, he will be there and we will do it for him. Yes, that's the up here for you. Like you see, speaking to us here on a prime a take and uh, it's been quite an interesting conversation so far. I, I do one thing that got me laughing the most was the chinchinga aspect. <laughs> because for you to grab the chinchinga to go and buy kinky shows that there was, some, there was something somewhere. But like, I will come to the Black Stars participation in the 2006 African Cup of Nations where you and your miss were not able to have the best of tournament. But before that, tell us briefly, how did you get to Europe? Yeah, so this is how I got to Europe. Um, the, the agent, I, I, I will not say he's an agent. The man that took me from Ghana is not an agent. Oh, okay. You know, after the 17 World Cup, most of my colleagues, they signed. Yes, yes contracts. Yeah, they are gone. I did not get anything, even the U20s. Uh, Domenico Ricci tried to send me to Italy. Uh, went to Venezia, playing for their youth. Yeah. Finished my medical seven, I have to sign and Richie said I should come and play the U17, U and the 20 World Cup. Thinking after the 20 World Cup, there will be a bigger offer. Bigger offer. I came and things doesn't work well, and then Venezia too have signed another player. Oh. So I, I, I lost that opportunity. opportunity. So I stayed in Ghana playing in the Ghana Premier League. But, but this is what happened. I was, I forgot about everything and then focus on my game because I know at the right time I will have that opportunity yeah. again. So. I moved from Olympics to Arts of Oak, and that year I said to myself, I'll give everything out, and I believe with Arts of Oak can push me in the... In, in, what in the was your career with Arts of Oak like? Yeah, it, was, it was very short, but, but the impact I did, the impact I made was huge. So that's how come Arts of Oak fans embraced me. Yeah. My career with us was very short, because I played one full season with yeah. them, won the league with them. My second season, then I have a loan spell in Saudi Arabia. Okay. I went on loan, came back, and then I had a chance to go to Israel. So with me, me with arts season, it was just two seasons and I'm out of arts. But That's the impact I made, made was very huge. And the Hazard fans adore that. It, it, exactly. <laughs> now let's come back to the national team. 2006 African Cup of Nations. I don't know if you would like to recall what, happened, what transpired in that tournament. Oh yeah, it's part of my career, so I have to say it. <laughs> okay, say it. I, I don't like thinking about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> then say it. Yeah, because... I remember that no, opening game that against was, Nigeria when we lost. Yeah, Neither to win against Senegal. Senegal. Neither to win against Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. All of a sudden, it never worked out. Tell yeah. us. Yeah, but before, before then, most of us were frustrated. Why? Yeah, because our team wasn't the same team that... Played the qualifier. Played the qualifier. Yeah. Because in the qualifier, we have strong, solid team. Yeah. But if you can recall, before the Nations Cup in Egypt, yes. we've missed at least three, four key players. Yes. Stephen Apia, Jan was out. Uh, Michael was out. was out. out. Suleiman Tari was, was out. out. Yeah, I Stephen Apia yeah, was had, had an injury, but still he played. He, he, he yeah. wasn't 100%. Yes, yes. You know, so for me, for me I felt the players that I, I, I'm used to, it's not the same. So already the frustration is there already, not only me, with all the management. So me, I wasn't surprised we did, we did not perform in that tournament. Okay. And then, and then also this 
incident happened against Senegal. Abibe, yeah. he punched me. I went down thinking I'm taking advantage of that situation, and then it, it, it hit back at me. So I was suspended for three games, saved one against Zimbabwe. Two more. Two more in the tournament. But I believe the management then, they don't believe we can go through the group stages. So they feel if they put me in the squad, there's no point. But one thing they forget that, not every 20 player in the 23-man squad Full play. played. So at least they should do, that, do, do me the honors. Do you have any regrets of that incident against Senegal? Yes, of course. I should have run and go for water instead of coming to the scene. I should have run away and go and take water to drink, to cool myself down. But hey, we are a team. It's a team sport. We all have to help each other. The incident has nothing to do with you? No, it had nothing to do with me. It was a, a, a very bad tackle on Steven Appiah. Uh, and as usual, players will react yeah. immediately. And I was the last person that got close to the scene. So it's like players pushing each other, stopping each other, and then Abibé hit me on the chest. But it's not a punch that will take me down, but I want to take advantage on the situation. So I dropped down, and then boom. They said stimulation or something. It's not a point that can take me down. And I got suspended. And that denied an opportunity of playing at the World Cup? Yes, that's what, that's what happened. And three games, two to go, Ghana not believing they will go to the next round, so there's no point of me being part of the team. But do you know if the FA appealed that decision, that decision of the Red No, they did not. Because I quite remember after the incident, I was chasing them to do it. I was chasing them to do it. But you know, 24 hours, you should do it before, before 24 hours passed. But eventually, the 24 hours passed without them doing anything. I was pushing them to, to follow up, at least to, to reduce their band. But it did not happen. I spoke to the former GFA president on this very show, and he said that they filed the appeal, but it was filed out of time. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't see the appeal being filed, but because if, if it said so, then we have to believe. Yeah, because he told me that it was Alex Asante who brought it. Okay. And then he was in the room with um, the former Deputy Sports Minister, Obi Amwa, yeah. plus another official of the FA that I know. Okay. <laughs> but he said, okay, Alex, you give it to him to file the appeal. So they went on to do other stuff. When they came back to ask him whether he has filed the appeal, he had forgotten. It, it was too late. Appeal. He had forgotten, right? Oh, okay. But that's human error. It's part of the game. And, and, but, but a human error denied you an opportunity to play at the biggest stage in world football. Yes, I know, but that's life, you know. It's life. You never know. Maybe, maybe if I'm in the World Cup, I won't be sitting here now. Briefly, the 2010 World Cup that you were dropped was a surprising thing that anyone in anywhere could have thought of. Yeah, that's what killed me. It killed me because in my mind, I've made my mind that after that tournament, I'm done with the national team. That's, that's going to be my last tournament or my last game in the national team because I believe I was aging and I believe I need energy to focus on my football uh, uh, club career because I know I've done a lot for the national team. So after that tournament, I've achieved everything that I want to achieve as a player, the World Cup. And let me focus with this few little energy that I, I have. Let me focus on my play football uh, club okay. career. So that was the mind. And also my contract was running out with arts. Yes. Six months in my contract. They were offering me a contract, but they want a pay cut. Yes. Because their budget has dropped. So they were they want me to take off. And I'm thinking if I go to the World Cup, one game in the World Cup can raise yeah. my budget up again. So I was waiting to go to the World Cup and then make a better offer. I, came, I was dropped, came back, and that contract did not come, come again. You were demoralized, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was. I was at some point. My wife had to follow me everywhere in the house. When I moved from France, uh, yeah, from France to Scotland, my wife had to follow me everywhere. I go upstairs, she's there. I want to go out. Were you depressed or something? Oh, yeah. 
yeah, it took me time to go, go over it because I felt that's the last moment. At that moment, I felt, okay, it's over. With the World Cup, for me, it's over. Because the next four years will be 2014. 2014, I've, I've retired already. What, what did the coaches say? What explanation did the coaches say for dropping you? Um, he, for him, there's not, not, not tangible reason, that, but the only thing he said to me was, because my question to him was, what was the criteria you used to pick? Because you have to look at players who are playing regular, doing well in their clubs. And that time I was the key player in arts. Talk about the, the qualifier, I was key player in the team. Yeah. But I know, I know the coach maybe, uh, he maybe. took me out because of different reasons. Because of different reasons, but not talking about performance. And what would have been that reason? I, I don't know. I, I, I still, I'm still waiting to find the answers. I'm still waiting to find someone that will come and tell me because of this you were dropped. Because looking at the squad that we have, 23, there's no way you tell me I cannot make into the 23-man squad. And he said, okay. The other thing that he said was, you, you remember there was a Nations Cup? Yes. Before... Yeah, yeah. The, the 2010 Nations Cup in, yes. in, uh, in Angola. Angola. He said most of the senior players caused problems because they were not starting the game. And he is thinking, you have so much respect for me to be on the bench. So the best thing for me to, to be out of the squad. But he took Steven. <laughs> he took Steven, yes, exactly. So uh, that's, Th that's the question. Play. That eventually cannot suffice. That's the question. What yeah. was your reaction when he told you you were not going to be part of that squad? I was, I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I was disappointed. And, and, and I, I quite remember the management were addressing me that, oh, there are more games. You know the normal... Yeah, more opportunities to come. Yeah, more opportunities. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not a small boy anymore. 2014, no way. 2014, no way. Did you bang a door on them? When yes, I did. I did. I did. I, I did. I was, I was shattered. I was... At that moment, I was like... I, I don't see myself doing anything else. Like, I don't know what was going on. And, you know, when, when you talk about this situation, trust me, my walk to that meeting room, I could have died on the way. Because it was like 10 p.m. in the evening. That's when they called me a meeting. And automatically, my mind was telling me, no, there is something wrong. I got in and I saw a like, bunch of people there. In the who, and who and who was in the meeting? Oh, I, 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 can't, I can remember about four or five of them. Four, the, five, co the coach? The coach, the FA president. Uh, former president, Nyantichi, Fred Papu, oh. and I think other two, three guys in the room. And they told me, oh, we have, uh, when they started saying Okay, let me, let me share one interesting story with you. And, and this, this story, I got it from both Kwesi uh, Nyantichi and Fred Papu. <laughs> Apparently, they had all argued why you should be at a tournament. And Milo gave them the list and told them to take out the player they want to take out and replace you. And none of them could do it for him. So what was, what was his reason for not taking me? What was, okay, so, so, what so, was Milo's okay, reason? Okay, That's okay. what I want, to, I want to ask. Well, they, okay, so I cannot speak for them. Yeah. But based on what they told me, because this is on record, based on what they told me, Milo had suggested that if you were going to play, you were going to play through the right. Yeah. And the only place he could find a place for you was in the middle. Mm. In the right, he thought he had um, Enkum and uh, John Pencil for the right. Fullback. Well, right, right fullback and then, or right? No, no. If, all if, those you, if players, you're going to play the right, the right, the right side. Uh -huh. and all then those players, the middle, sorry to catch you, all those players you've mentioned, they are right fullbacks. Uh, but they he, are not wingers. Uh, and even in the, tournament, so, he so, used, in the tournament, he used Enkum. And you see what happened? Him. And maybe he needed someone who could cover up for John Pinson. Come on. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're hey, a coach. So some, of, some of these things you, hey. some of these things hey, you can come appreciate. On. <laughs> come on. Right fullback and right winger, different things. Okay, so and, the, other and the, quality, the quality that I have, that's what I've used to help him, Milo, to achieve a lot of games, to win a lot of games. It should come out clean and say, okay. Because, no, no, because no, no, this explanation no, came from it came from come, Fred Papo and then it should come out, Milo should come out clean and tell Ghanaians that he want me to sign with his agent and I did turn it down. 
Miller asked from, you to sign for his from, agent and you refused? Yes. From, from what you are telling me that he gave this list to them, okay, to the management said, okay, remove anyone from it and put me in. That shows that he had something against me. Because he offered me for his agent and I turned it down. Did yes. you tell the FA this? No. Why? Uh, no. I didn't. Why did you not tell them? I felt it's, <laughs> it's not necessary. It's between me and him. But for what you are telling me now, that the, he gave the list to the management and told them to take whoever they should take out. You can't tell me that 23 months squad you took to the, to the tournament. I cannot fit into that system. No chance. No chance. No, I'm, I'm quite surprised to hear this. So are you suggesting that most of the players that Milo accepted to go to the World Cup with them, some of them agreed to sign for his most agent? Of, most of them, especially the younger ones that made the team. If you go check the background, they, were, they signed with Milo's agent. Yes. In most Kung's, of those players most of signed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like how many? Oh, a lot. Especially the younger, the younger ones that came through. Especially the younger ones. If you talk about the younger, younger ones, I can talk of Finn Kuma, I can talk of Jonathan Mensah, Andrea Ayew, mm. uh, Dominic Adia. Yes. Uh, all, all those boys, they were Milo's agent. I forget his name. I met them in Egypt. Myself, Milo, and him met them in Egypt. He was talking about Black Ben deal. So I have to sign with them. All I did was give my agent's number, talk to my agent, that's it. They never got back to me. So it looks like, for, for what you are telling me today, made me understand that, okay, then he had a problem with me. So when you look at it, he's not thinking about the nation, he's not thinking about what he can, he can, he can do with the squad that he has. He's thinking about what he can achieve. If you've just joined us, we are speak, still speaking to Laie Kingston, um, a former Black Stars player, a former Haas of Oak player, a former Haas, I mean the Haas in Scotland, not, not the Haas you know, player. And uh, he's a man who also played for Haas of Oak Rivals, played Olympics. That's where his career actually began. He's been sharing with us um, his story, uh, how he got to the football space, how he started out as a, a boxer. Now we're talking about his national team career, where he wanted to play the World Cup, something that never happened. Like you you mentioned something that is quite interesting, that you did admit that when you were told that you were not going to the World Cup 2010, you banged the door on, on the people who invited you to, to the meeting. But one thing too that others have also argued was that, just like you personally mentioned, you knew you were aging and 2010 World Cup was supposed to be like, how should I put it? You are swan song to the national team. There are others who have also said that Milo did something when the team was camping in France. He decided to play the younger players against the senior players so that he could select his team. And that probably also influenced his decision on who to go to the World Cup and who not to go. And not your position that because he wanted you to sign for his agent, that's why he didn't take you to the tournament. Yeah, uh, I quite remember the training camp that we went. Yes. We did not even train. All we did is advert for Puma, left, right, center. The only time that we went on the football pitch proper for us to have football boots to go and train is when we got there, after warm up, then he divided the team into two. And it showed clearly that you can see the younger players on one yes, side yes. and the older players on one side. Yes. But you cannot stand on that one training game. But the younger players beat the senior players. I hear it was, was it 4-1 or 5-1? Yeah, but it's in training. It, it, it can happen to be like most of the senior players, eh, we go into the World Cup, it's training, you have to be careful, take it easy. You cannot stand on one game to pick your final 23. No, he's already made his mind already. He should be, I'm a technical person. I should be very transparent enough for Ghanaians. If I'm being picked as a national coach. I'll be very transparent to Ghanaians that, and I will justify each and every, explain why this player is there, this player is not there. I will not hide behind anything. With him, I think he has something more than, on a hindsight, more than using that one training game to make the 23-man squad. On a hindsight, Laie, do you think 
you should have reported this incident to the management of the FA that Milo wants you to sign for his agency and you are refusing to do it. On a high side, do you think you should have reported? Um, for, for me, I believe that time I, I, should, I should be more professional to keep it on, on, on for myself and then for, for Milo himself. You, you understand me? I don't want... No, but as yeah. someone who has the interest of the nation at heart, you cannot allow someone a Serbian, to be that, for that matter, but, who was so, being paid with the taxpayers' money, but that moment, doing business with the national team at the expense of the state. So, as someone who had the interest of the state at heart, you should have told the leadership of the FA, this is what your coach is doing. I quite remember before leaving the, the, the room, if the management will recollect, when, before I banged the door, the only thing I said to Milo is, he should finish his business and then get out of my country. You told Milo to finish his business and get out of his Get out of my country. So, so that time, I said it. it, it you shouldn't have waited for him to finish his business. <laughs> By that time, he's the boss. If he decided if taking him out of the team already. So when I was leaving, if the management will testify, this the right words I said to him. Finish doing your business and leave my go away from my country. That's what I said to him. That's the exact words I said to me. And then went and then banged the door. I was, I was fuming that time because it's, it's, it was very difficult for me. It was very tough for me. And me, I'm very honest. I say it as it is. I was very honest. I, I showed everybody around the team that, no, I was really hurt. Do you sometimes feel that <coughs> you were never destined to play at the World Cup? <laughs> now I will say yes because my, my career is over. But I still believe I can be there as, as different positions. Maybe as a coach or something? Yes, of course. <laughs> so far as I'm in the game, I've not given up. <laughs> I, I have to enjoy that thing. I have to feel it. We'll get to that, we'll that, we'll get to that, coaching, <laughs> we'll that, get to that coaching bit. Before the 2010 World Cup, I remember there was the African Cup of Nations we hosted. Unfortunately, we couldn't win it. Bye. You were part of that team. I remember that quarterfinal game against Nigeria when um, you and Aminu Dramano came in mm. and changed the complexion of that game. Yeah. And Ghana won 2-1. Yeah. Tell us, how disappointing was it that if we could not win? I remember that semi-final against uh, Cameroon. Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I didn't eat my food. <laughs> again, <laughs> again when, you, when you look at that squad, the team that we started the tournament with, yes. you can see the, the telepathy yes. in the team. Yes. That particular game, we miss who? John Mensah. John Mensah who have been the pillar of the back. Then they have to move Michael Essien back. back. You're talking of a player that have played number six position for over 50 games. Yes. And now you move him to the center back. So when you look at where the pass, the deep pass from Eto went, it was the, yeah, the, from the space. Yeah, from Eto to Nkong, yes. It was the space that Michael Essien left because he's played midfield for a long time. Yes. If you have John Mason there, he will stay, he won't go. Because he played midfield for a long time. He gets excited and then try to leave and go, go in the middle. So, so small, small details affect us because we, are, we were in top form. Yes. That time, that year, the whole Africa is only Ghana and uh, Ivory Coast. Yeah, I remember Ghana was ranked around number eight in the world or something. Ghana, like Ivory or 14. Coast. Yeah, Ghana was Ghana, number 14 in the world. Yeah. Ghana, Ivory Coast. So, so everyone was predicting in the final, Ghana, Ivory Coast in the final. And we met in the third place. And you beat them handsomely. Yes. <laughs> we were waiting for it. <laughs> We were I, waiting for it. I, 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 I recall yeah. that so, so well. Yeah. But as and, and the build up to the nation, that Nations Cup, yes. we had a tournament here. I was in crazy yeah, form. The Four Nation tournament. I was in crazy form. I remember the Africa Keys card. You see, I was in crazy form. So I was, I was building myself slowly to the 2010 World Cup. I was building myself slowly. And when we went to France, even before we went to France, the kind of preparation I did, I came into the country very early. Can you imagine every day before we move to Paris? I would drive to Jamestown, leave my car. My brother would be driving behind me. I would jog from Jamestown to Ramada Beach, Nungwa. Every day. And I did that for five days. At some point, middle of the night, 4 or 5 a.m., Kobna Yibo have to see me. And then the next morning, he called me, hey, Ube Kumungo. I was jogging, trying to be fit. Because I know this is the last one. 
This is the last one. And the someone take it, took it away from you? No. No, 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 no. Someone took it away from you? No, no, no. Do you regret working with Milo? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Because we, there is a saying that uh, coaches can make you and break you. And I think Milo broke me. He broke me, he did. Coaches can make or break you, yeah. and Milo Brook, Laie Kingston. Yes. I'm going very quick to your, your, your career uh, as, as a coach now, and uh, you touch on me briefly with your, your, your coaching career and all that. But as a technical person now, the 2008 African Cup of Nations, we went to the tournament with a half faith Shilla Liyasu. Was it a wrong decision to do? Because he was supposed to be the, the backup for John, John Mensah. John Mensa. Yeah, but if the player is not fit, then he's not supposed to be there. For me, I think it's, it's a bad decision that we made. But then again, the player himself has to be very honest and tell him, because doctors will check you. They will yes. see, they will check, but the other day, you are the last person that will say, okay, I can do it or I, I can't. I feel okay. I, I can't do it. One typical example, in 2008, I was also injured that my club have written me off. Yes. I, I, so I, I remember you played some of the I matches my from the bench. Ankle, ankle ligament. Yes. I was supposed to miss the tournament, yes. but I recovered very fast. So I went to camp with crutches. But as I stayed in camp, treatment progresses, I can see that my ankle is becoming stronger. I started a tournament. I started a tournament. So Did you, did you miss Stephen Appiah? Oh yeah, of course, definitely. His presence in that tournament will, will help a lot, will help us go a long way. We, we missed him. We missed him a lot. As, as, as a coach, like can say, or, let, let me just talk about your, 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 your coaching career. At what point did you decide that you were going to be a coach? Um, trust me, um, <laughs> throughout the situations with the World Cup situation and all that, for me, my family, especially my wife said, after your career, manage your investment in our business and forget about football because he, he, she felt I've not been treated fairly when game. it comes to the national team so she felt there is nothing I can get from them so I should just focus on something else but um, when I was playing most coaches keep telling me I can be a good coach why because every drill that our coaches would take us through yes. I'm the first person that will take it. That will pick it. That will pick it. And then also try to direct uh, my teammates. Okay, okay, okay. So Tom Venom, you've been my, my long time friend, right to dream, one hour of right to dream. Yeah. You've been my long time friend. With him, he coached me in the Accra Great Olympics. Oh, okay. When he came, he saw me and then he wanted to build a team around me. I moved to Arts of Oak and he came as an assistant to Herbert Ado. Oh, okay. He came and then he wanted to build a team around me again. So after my football career, we're still friends and yeah. he kept telling me. Once in a while he would call me, hey, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm just chilling. He would be like, okay, why don't you coach? Then at some point I said, okay, it looks like I'm interested now. And then, and then he said to me, but you can't do anything apart from coaching. If you are coaching, you we'll go full time. And I can see you have it, you can do it. So it's Tom Vernon who motivated me that. You can do it. You have what it takes to be a good coach. And you were in, you, you were in this academy? Yeah. Tell me that story. How so, was it like? Yeah, so uh, when he spoke to me and I decided to coach, I, I started my own team in my area. Ah, so you, a second you, division team. Oh, you have a second division team? Yes, I formed my own second division team. Oh, okay. And, and I was using the drills that you I, learned. I learned when I was playing. <laughs> yes. To do. And then also, of course, the experience that I had yeah, yeah, yeah. from coaches and all that, I used that. And in the game situation, I can read games. Yes. Well, even when I was playing, I can see, oh, you should move there. You should, I can see, I can direct some of my players when I was playing. So that's what I was using until I heard that there is um, a CAF B license happening yes. in Winneba. Yes. So I, I joined it as soon as possible. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember I, remember I called... Uh, Oh, okay. And the, course, kind of and the course is going to happen. Yeah. So I, I said to him, no, I want to be on that course. Give me a number, made a payment, 
I took a car, boom. I was in Winneba. So before they even got there, I was there waiting. So they were all shocked. <laughs> They were all sure. <laughs> because it's something you want to do. Yes, it's something that I want to do. And then, and then when I finished that course, that's when, what opened my mind and everything. Wow. I know there's more into that. That's what motivated me and said to myself, I'm going to educate myself to the highest level. So that's how come I've done my UF CAF B license, waiting for the A, which never okay. <laughs> came. Then I, when I joined Right to Dream, Right to Dream came and, and, and signed me for three years. Yes. For the, the, the academy. The academy. So I was there as a head coach, going through and Right to Dream educated me a lot. I went to Right to Dream with you. Push me from, <laughs> push me from this level to a different level in my coaching career. I picked a lot from there, made me understand how to plan sessions, how to understand the game, uh, the faces of play, uh, gave me a style of playbook like this. You have to put everything here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then why did you leave Right to Dream? <laughs> If you were having the fun, they, were, they gave you a lot. Yeah, they gave me everything, you know. Why, they, why did you leave? They, they sponsored my UEFA B license. Oh, really? Yes, they sponsored my UEFA B license. And now I'm on, on my UEFA A license, they sponsor my UEFA A license as well. Wow. Yes, so, so I'm on my UEFA A license. Next year, July, I'll finish my assessment. And then hopefully within one or two weeks, I'll get my UEFA A license. Them, like you say, I need to understand why did you leave them? <laughs> why did you leave yeah. right to do? You know, you know, it got to a point that I, I realized I've done this for close to four years. Yes. Academy football for four years. And I, I noticed where I am now, I need I need a different challenge. Yeah. I need a different challenge, like a, a first team football. Yeah. That's that's what I want in my career. I want to grow, I want to uh, pick three points. I want to do calculation, periodization for a week, one week periodization, two weeks, month, a year periodization. So I said to myself, I needed this challenge. With academy football, I've done it for three, four years. Yeah. I think it's enough. So Let I me face the world, be on my own, and then get a first team football. Are you available to manage our national teams? Oh yeah, yeah I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> Ever ready, right? Where do you want to start? Ever ready, right? And, what? Anywhere, anywhere in the national teams, if they give me, and and if even they, if they give you the black stars. Oh yeah, of course. I'm 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 ready for it. Of course, I'm ready. I'm ready. All I need is to have proper recruitment, yeah. backroom staff recruitment around me, and I I think I'll be I'll be fine. You know. U seventeen, U twenty, black stars or black meteors. Tell us briefly, which one would you, would you want to touch any, the most? Any, anyone that comes on my, in my way, I will do it. But the U-17s will be better. Well, that's the foundation. Oh, okay. So that when you start from there, you people see up. what you can do. Yeah. You can build the style of play through the ranks. Because if I go to the U-17s and make impact, yes. Ghanaians will say, okay. Give me U-20. U-20. And Ghanaians will believe that what I did with the U-17s. Yeah. We shouldn't leave it. It should be there. I see. Then that's when you can have that transition, transition to the top. To the top. So the same way I grew up throughout my football career, I would prefer to, in my coaching career, to start from under 17 and, 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 and build up. And build up. And, and that is where you want to see yourself at the technical bench of the national team at the World Cup. Yeah. Is yeah. it the, the junior national team or the, the, the senior? National the senior team? one. Let's see, the junior national, the junior World Cup. I've been there. I've been in the U20, U17. The ultimate one. I want to be there, and it will happen. How soon? Um, I keep working a day at a time. It doesn't matter. Sooner or later, I should be there. And talking of the World Cup, this year's World Cup, we are in the group: Uruguay, South Korea, Portugal. Top group. Eh? Portugal. They've beaten us before yes. in the group stages. Uruguay, we all know Suarez's story. So that one too is a must win. Payback time. Um, but it's going to be tough. Korea too, now they are playing good football. So it's going to be very tough for us, but the technical men are there to help us win it. Based on the performances you witnessed in the last final matches, are we ready for the World Cup? Um, I would say 60 to 70% we are which is, it shouldn't be so. For now, I believe that... Uh, we should have Ghanians, been 90%? Ga Ghanian, we should have been 90% ready for the World Cup by Ga now? Ghanians, Ga Ghanians should see our starting 11 already. But it looks like we've not found it yet. 
we have only one more game to play in the major tournament. That's where I see there will be a problem from there. But I believe um, the technical team over there will put things right before the tournament starts. How far do you think we can go at the World Cup? We take a, a game at a time. <laughs> the language of technical men. <laughs> <laughs> but but taking a game at a time. Um, we take a game at a time. Yes, taking a game at a time. You know, but, but one, Again, thing, one thing we are forgetting, you know, in 2006 World Cup, right? Yes, yes. 2006 World Cup, we failed in the Nations Cup. Yes. We failed awfully. Yes. But in the World Cup, look at the performance. It was great, right? Are we going to have the same thing this year? Yeah, I believe in Ghana. I believe Ghana, every tournament, you know, Ghanaians doesn't have trust in the team. Yeah. But they always go and do well, apart from them not winning the cup. We do well. Africa, they respect us, and even the world, they respect us. Just that we have to win major tournament. That's all we're waiting for. And it will happen. There's one interesting story about Otuado. He played at the first World Cup in 2006 was a scout for the 2014 World Cup. Now he's going to Qatar 2022 as a coach. So you've been in the scene? Yes. You've been there throughout. Even 2006, people, say, uh, they, people said they sold my position to him. Because he was the one who played my position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, came, he did not play in the qualifiers. Against, against Czech Republic. 2006. Yes, yes. Yeah. He started that game against Czech Republic. <laughs> exactly. I remember. Exactly. So people said, oh, because of my suspicion, they brought him in. Yeah. You know. But, but with his experience as having played at 2006 World Cup, having scouted for Christy Appear for the 2014 World Cup, mm. in fact, he was a scout for Germany and mm. then now going there as a coach. Mm. A very good experience, we yeah, can count yeah. on. Yeah, we can. But many of us are not hopeful based on what he's done in the last seven matches. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know um, Ghanaians are not, still not happy, but until any coach have not will not win anything for Ghanaians, it's not enough for us. One thing every coach should have the, it at the back of their mind. Until, if, 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 it, until you win something for the country. You of course, that. that's what we're waiting for. But your group at, two, least, at least African Cup. Your group too has never won anything. So yes. Should we forget about you people? Because you've not, no, you've no, not done no, anything? No, you don't have to because of the impact we made. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we qualified them to first ever World Cup. So at least. But, but the coach too, have taken us to the World Cup. So no, no, first ever. ever. First ever. <laughs> <laughs> Laya Kingston, my guest here on Prime Take. I'm of town of the life. Thank you very much for your time. Continue to enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs> <laughs>